hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the circle coming to you live from the studios of catholic vitality 360 i am your host bernard dumont president and ceo of catholic vitality 360 we do this as a service as part of our catholic vitality 360 collective where we bring together catholic school leaders to learn about topics and areas of of edification that will impact our Catholic schools, parishes, and dioceses. Today's topic is very important called High Impact School Marketing, creating the raving fan marketing strategy for your school. What do we mean by high impact school marketing? First of all, this means that you are have uh, a low cost strategy with a very high return. And we're choosing a very transformative strategy to now look at that you can implement right away called the raving fan marketing strategy. We've worked with many schools on this in our leadership coaching and in our school vitality partnerships. And this is a strategy that can truly transform your effort. So we're going to talk about this today. And I want you to get ready to implement this, you know, over the course of this month and April and May as we move into the end of the year and certainly have this ready to go when we begin the school year uh, next year as we uh, look at uh, ways that we can impact our school marketing efforts. So as always, let's begin with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us recall that we are in God's presence. Dear Lord, as we approach Holy Week and Easter, may we find the joy in the surrender to find our hope in the resurrected Christ and the zeal and commitment to continue our faith journey. As we pray together the surrender prayer, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Lord, I surrender myself to you. Lord, I surrender myself to you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So hopefully you're doing well as we enter next week, uh, Holy Week and, and, and the Easter weekend. Uh, of course, uh, Sunday is Palm Sunday, and uh, this, this begins a very important weekend in terms of the life of our uh, Catholic faith. I want you to uh, learn about all these topics that we have been presenting in our Zoomcast. These are also on our YouTube channel and also on our website. And it's part of what we call the Vitality Collective. And it's a place for our teachers, faculty, and staff uh, to learn, to share, to grow, to collaborate, and to discover. Uh, lots of free resources on our website, uh, blogs and the videos. You can ask us questions. We also have the uh, Vitality Scorecard, which is an assessment tool for Catholic schools, parishes, and dioceses. There's one for uh, your Catholic school. And we see a lot of schools uh, participating in this and being a part of our Catholic collective. So let's begin to think about and put on the right mindset as we approach this topic. There's a, uh, a theory or an, uh, 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 th this acronym uh, that we use, this theory in terms of how to respond to things going on in your school or even in marketing or enrollment or any area of the school. And it basically is E plus R equals O. And that is that events happen to us along the way. And it is our response to these events that will produce a particular outcome. And what we want to focus on is these responses. If your enrollment is going down or your enrollment's going up or you need to add marketing to the mix or you need to do a better job with relationships or whatever it may be, the response to what's happening will then produce the right outcome. So it's not what happens, it's what we do about it and are we ready to respond. So we say, Find the truth, no blaming, no complaining, find the best options, build the mission, promotes vitality, and we need to certainly get to work. 
So at Catholic Vitality 360, we believe that it is all about Catholic school vitality, right? The creation and integration of key components and systems that contribute to the growth, promotion, and sustainability of all areas of the school, right? And that's what we want to focus on are those areas of the school that are important to us and we celebrate innovation. All of our efforts are celebrated and support this overall priority. And this is part of the process of Catholic school vitality in the sense that we are moving forward in a way that protects all of us. It's part of what we call the seven circles of Catholic vitality. And you have seen this in our previous Zoomcasts on our website. This is what we call our framework for success. When a school comes to us and says, what do we need to focus on? We begin the process with the school vitality scorecard. And we ask our schools to complete this individually and then as a team, come together and compare your results. These are the scorecard areas that you can score each one of these, one, a two, a three, or a four, and then you add up your score to get an overall score. And at the bottom, we have some notes on either a red score, a yellow score, or a green score. And we're asking our schools to complete this at least four times a year or three times a year, sometimes four if they're trying to move quickly on things, but typically three times a year in September at the beginning of the year, in January to get a mid-year review, and then in June after the school year, uh, which may indicate some areas of growth and improvement. Some ones and twos are areas of growth. You may have three and four and others that... Uh, that we want to continue. But this is also on our website at catholicvitality360.com. And if you fill it out online, it'll give you a real-time score. And then you can bring that to your meeting. All right. So let's talk about uh, these three critical areas. And it's not just marketing. We believe that it really is part of our overall mission and vision. And then there are three critical areas that come to life here. There is a communication plan, there is a marketing plan, and there is an enrollment plan, right? All these work together with the mission and vision of the school. So overall communication is just messaging events activities things happening at school uh, dates on the calendar classroom activities all of that is general communication we then create a marketing message out of that in terms of what our message is right who are we as a school what are we trying to promote and then it gets more specific to an enrollment plan which is attracting families to your school to enroll in your school. So there's a communication plan, a marketing plan, and even more specifically, an enrollment plan. We also have a companion blog that we write that corresponds to this Zoomcast. And earlier this week, I wrote a blog on the raving fan marketing plan. And here was one of the quotes I want to share with you. With the rise and ubiquity of social media, and with multiple and accessible digital platforms, Catholic school marketing may seem increasingly more complex as we compete for shorter attention spans and an intensely technology-driven consumer culture. And so I want in this course and in our efforts to remove complexity, right? We need to get very simplified in our efforts. And the world tells us that things are complex. And sometimes the complexity is troubling because we need to find a way through the complexity to simplify it as we create these plans. Another quote from the blog this week is, through our leadership coaching process, we teach that the goal in Catholic school marketing is simplicity. With a clear, compelling, and consistent message of faith, family, and academic excellence, we remove the complexity, right? So it's not a myriad of multiple messaging. It's very clear, compelling, and consistent about our faith life, about our families, and about academic excellence. Those are the three pillars 
of our marketing plan and our marketing messaging. And I'm going to show you how we design this and you can design this around what we call these message statements. Your school to build the foundation of marketing should have six or seven basic messages, okay? What we call message statements or branding statements. And I, if I were to ask you to tell me the story of your school, these, is, these are the statements you're going to share. These show up in brochures, they're on the website, they're in conversations, they're at the open house, they're on the tour, and everybody gets copies of these right? The faculty helped with this, the marketing committee helped with this, and you've got your, your, your messaging pretty well locked down. And then all of your marketing strategies are built on this house of messaging, right? You build the foundation first, you build the house, right? We're building the house of marketing and at its foundation are these message statements. So here I pulled out the marketing piece from the Vitality Scorecard. And in this assessment piece of the seven circles, we have communication and marketing. And just to look at these, to, to set the tone for what we're looking for are five components or five areas of assessment. Do you have a clear branding, a value advantage, and a value proposition? right? What's your advantage in the marketplace? What's your value proposition? And what is your branding? What's your logo? What are your colors? Where is it? How do you use it? You know, it needs to be very clear. What is your advantage in the marketplace? And tell us that. And then your value proposition, the value you bring to the church, to the community, to families. Uh, take a look at your logo, the website, and your active social media platforms. Do you have a marketing committee in place with ongoing formation? That's a one, two, three, or four for all of these areas. Do you have a marketing plan with implementation? And are you implementing the plan on a weekly basis? This is not a marketing plan that we get around to, okay? Or we, we add on, or we, oh, we're gonna get to that next, next year or next month. The marketing plan is a weekly marketing plan. There's a monthly marketing plan and there is a uh, annual marketing plan. There's a marketing budget and there's ongoing evaluation. So these are the areas of assessment from the Vitality Scorecard uh, to be scored on a one, two, three, or four, four being the highest, of course. And so what is effective Catholic school marketing? Well, it's a process right? It's a process of a number of things happening that is systematic, comprehensive, and well executed. It's part of advancement, and it's designed to actively communicate, promote, and advance the school's mission, purpose, values, vision, and market advantages. Now, you can use this as your definition. Anything in these, uh, in these shows or in these uh, blogs or, or, or webinars or Zoomcasts, you can use. I, I'll, I'll give you the permission to use it, to put it in your newsletter, to put it on the website, just to be a part of your marketing process. And we, and we know that marketing of this style, of this, of this type, complements enrollment, right? Remember, communication, we have uh, marketing, and then it filters into enrollment in terms of of asking families to take a look at us and attract them to our school. What are the attractive features of your school? It's part of your marketing plan, your communication plan, and properly positions the school for our strategic growth and ongoing vitality. That's an important word for us. It's in our name, Catholic Vitality 360. We take a total view of this, a 360 view of this, and one of which is marketing. So what is the disposition for marketing, right? As we look at the school mission, right? The school mission is paramount. It's part of what we do. It's part of who we do it for, our families, our students, our community, our alumni, our businesses, our friends. And we also want to answer the question why we do this. And the big why is the mission of the church. The big why is that we want to make missionary disciples of our students. The goal is certainly academics, certainly, 
you know, extracurriculars, but paramount is the mission, which is primarily to make missionary disciples of our students. And we must model that as our faculty and staff. And so we have uh, at Catholic Vitality 360, we have a little graphic here that we use in all of our publications and workshops that really shows you the components of effective marketing and communication. So at the top going around clockwise, we must have a commitment from our leaders. Okay, then we need to be a school of excellence. I've said this before in marketing that it's very difficult for us to market a school that is not excellent, okay, or a school that is struggling. So before we, we print the brochure and have the open house and give the tours, we've got to have something to rave about. We've got to be a school of excellence. So I look at this having been a school administrator and a development director and now in partnership with schools, that this works from the inside out, right? We need to be good on the inside of the building and that message grows outside of the building, right? Got to do it good inside. Got to make it a good process on the inside in order to achieve success on the outside. We understand the educational marketplace. We articulate our unique difference. We create branding statements. I'll show you that in a moment. We establish a marketing team, and I'm just going around the circle here. We execute a monthly game plan of marketing and communication, and we evaluate and expect success. So these are the areas that when we work with schools in partnership, a school vitality partnership, these are the areas that we put in place. And we partner with you, and we guide you through this as part of our process. So we, we, we look at leadership, a commitment from the leadership. We look at being a school of excellence. We look at the educational marketplace. We look at your unique difference. All of these items here go into the marketing process. Again, we're also trying to simplify it and remove the complexity. We want to remove the complexity because we need to focus on the steps and the strategies to get there and not get bogged down in the emotion of it or the difficulty of it. We've got a Monday morning plan. And the marketing plan is Monday morning. What are we doing during the month of March, April, May, and June to advance our school? That's why it's part of the advancement process. Uh, Monday morning plan, the weekly plan, the monthly plan, and the annual marketing plan. So we often begin this process by asking some key questions. And I'm not going to uh, answer these today. These are your questions, and you can be a part of the answers if you want to bring this out to your group but uh, or your marketing team. But these are the questions. Question A. What is your mission and unique difference? You've got to articulate this. I mean, write this down, do some brainstorming, get it up on the flip chart, get it up on the whiteboard, and really articulate this. Uh, question B, what is your value proposition and your competitive advantage? I know that sounds very sort of corporate or very sort of, uh, you know, marketing jargon, but it's very important. A value proposition is, is really from a parent point of view or from a faculty and staff point of view or even alumni, what is the value that your school brings to the marketplace and to the church? What are we actually doing, right? What do we bring? What is our value proposition? We propose what? to educate missionary disciples that can be part of the Catholic faith and be citizens in the community and do good things, right? What is our value proposition? And what is our competitive advantage uh, in terms of the educational marketplace? What do we do differently? What do we do well? And what can we offer as an advantage? And that is part of the marketing plan and our branding statements, our, our messaging statements. Question C, how can you tell the story of your school with appealing images, words, and content? Images, words, and content. Continuing with three more questions. What is your compelling call to action? 
when you're in a in a situation where uh, you have a tour going on or you have people in the building or you want to make a case for a building project or an annual giving campaign what is your call to action join us in our success come to the open house be part of the tour team be part of our success be part of our mission and vision right what is your call to action and then question E, how can we create raving fans in the community and beyond? And I'm going to share that with you today as this goes through. And uh, I want you to really think about implementing that over the next 30, 60, 90 days to get started this year on this raving fan marketing plan because it is high impact and it does produce incredible returns and such good word of mouth. And then finally, question F, how can we create an effective school marketing system, right? Marketing system. A system means that you have a series of interconnected parts. They've all been thought through and you know what each part is doing, each person is doing, each component is doing to produce a positive result. One of the positive results of effective marketing is enrollment growth. If you're getting the word out and you're a school of excellence and you have these metrics in place, you're getting people to come to the open house, you're getting clicks on the website, you're getting clicks on your YouTube channel, you're getting good people around talking about you. These raving fans are singing your praises. You're measuring these, right? You want to measure as much as possible because measurements and metrics will then allow you to double down on the things that are working and reduce or eliminate those strategies that are not working. One strategy that we get a lot of feedback on is should we be doing billboards? Well, I am a fan of billboards, but I'd rather get them donated by a parent uh, or, or some sort of better financial situation uh, because sometimes they're expensive and hard to measure. So this is one of the strategies uh, that I spend some time on in longer workshops or a longer format. Uh, what are some of the key strategies uh, beyond the raving fan marketing plan because we only have about an hour here to discuss this But if you want to call me and get in touch with me about some other strategies I certainly like billboards. I like the tour. I like a good website. You know, that's part of the system Okay, there is not one strategy part of the system. You may have You know seven eight nine ten or more strategies that are working all the time to produce the results you want one of the issues we confront in our leadership coaching with schools and, and in the marketing arena is, is the need to have standards for our logo and the use of our logo. And um, sometimes over the years, whether it's a parent group or an alumni group or even athletics, you know, they bring in logos and uh, clip art that they find on the, on the internet and they simply start using that uh, to, to, to be a part of our school images. And this is very important uh, to really protect your logo. And there's only so many ways that these groups uh, can use the logo, right? Uh, we lay out the colors, we lay out the, uh, the main uh, logos for, the, for all the different components. We have different variations. We have, uh, we have the text use of the logo. We have certain shields of the logo. We have colors. We have this. We only have about you know, five, six, or seven options, right? And when there's any t-shirts to be printed or logos to be used for auctions or events or activities, this is understood by all of your stakeholders and volunteers. So we're gonna choose this one and that one for the t-shirts. We're gonna choose this one and that one for the auction material. We're gonna choose these two for that other event, right? And so you want to have a very consistent use of your logo. We've talked also about the use of these branding statements, and this may be a initial first step for you because uh, we've gotta get some things on paper, and there are statements written and then utilize throughout your marketing efforts that basically tell your story, okay? 
Marketing could also be defined as telling our story. What is our story and how do we tell that story? So what I've done here with Catholic schools is when I sit with them and sit with the marketing team, it's a brainstorming session with with flip charts and whiteboards, and we actually write out these branding statements, okay? And these are then used for all of our marketing strategies. We are a Catholic school, for example, possessing strong Catholic identity and mission equipped to serve the local, regional, and global Catholic church. Okay, so that's your message, right? That's your brand. We demonstrate academic excellence. We want to be a school of distinction. Okay, we're a committed group of faculty and staff dedicated to learning, growing, and sharing. Okay, so again, we've got Catholic identity, we've got academics, and we've got our faculty and staff. We've got one that talks about uh, improving our programs and facilities, and we're a culture of continuous improvement or innovation. We are a community of selfless service to each other and the area and the church. We permeate our spirit with quality athletics and extracurricular activities, okay? So these are six, you might have six or seven, but these articulate who we are. This is your story. This is the foundational component of everything else that's going to happen in marketing. And that's part of this marketing process. We also organize the uh, marketing efforts around the four seasons of the year. And so I've done coursework on this and other, other webinars and other Zoomcasts on the four seasons of the marketing calendar. And there's a season one. There's a season two, there's a season three, and there's season four. There's a season four. And these are based on the school year calendar, and it basically gives you a breakdown of what we should be doing in marketing and communications during these seasons of the year. And we can go into this uh, in future uh, webinars and Zoomcasts, but I want to show you this because it's also a good way to organize your marketing efforts. We also have uh, at our disposal what we call a marketing toolkit. And the marketing toolkit is simply a way to say what is, what are the strategies, what is our approach to marketing. We have a series of marketing strategies in the marketing toolkit and you want to load up the toolkit with these marketing strategies, right? One of which is the raving fan marketing plan, which you see at the bottom here. We call the group that works on this the raving fan team. So in the toolkit, we have a marketing calendar. We have a good school website. We have print media. We have social media. We have advertising. We have press releases. We have targeted direct mail campaigns. We have open houses and tours, and we've got our raving fan team. Now, you can add much more to this, but this is what we think are some of the essential tools in the marketing toolkit. And if you don't have them, you know, it's time to start working on them. And, and, and this is going to help to show you how we're going to do this and put these strategies inside the toolkit. All right. Okay, so what we want to do is sort of set the tone here for this high impact marketing strategy that we call the raving fan marketing strategy. Okay. And it is a high impact strategy because the costs are so low, but the impact is so high. And it's based on a very important concept and a very successful concept called good word of mouth marketing, right? What we want, the gold, okay? What is gold in marketing is to have happy people telling other people about your school, right? This is a raving fan. So think for a moment, who are your raving fans? Just want you to take a moment to think about your raving fans, your advisory council, your parent group, your athletic group, your alumni group, the people you do business with. Just take a moment and begin to think about all the people that love your school. These are people that are graduates, 
These are parents that are part of these, uh, these activity groups, these volunteer groups. There are many, many people that love your school. And so we call this group collectively your raving fans. Now you may have them now, but what are they saying and what are they doing with you in the community? So this is going to be a very strategic, intentional, and deliberate process. And the process revolves around five key steps. And let's jump right into the five key steps. The first step, number one, is to be a school of excellence and vitality. Okay, once again, it's very difficult to market a school that is struggling. So we've got to extract from the life of the school, you know, the, these five or six or seven brag points or branding statements. What are you doing well that you want to tell everyone? Find excellence within the building. Academic excellence, extracurricular excellence, teaching excellence, Catholic identity excellence, all the things you're doing that are what we call the good news network, okay? You put all these together into a network of success and, and communication. We call that the good news network. And you've got to start writing those down, putting them on the website, doing videos around them, and then share these with your raving fans. So schools of excellence deliver on promises. They focus on faith, hope, and love. And this is your story of success. You translate that into a marketing plan. Okay. You translate that, that sense of excellence and vitality into marketing strategy. Okay. How can we tell the story of our success over the course of time six or seven branding statements repeated into all of our strategies, right? So again, we're trying to remove the complexity. We're trying to be simple. We're trying to be focused. We're trying to be intentional. You know, tell me your story, right? Really, tell me your story. What's your story? You know, if I'm a, if I'm a young parent and I've got three or four young children, we're, we're shopping around for schools and it's very competitive. We've got public schools, charter schools, private schools, Catholic schools, homeschooling, right? Tell me why we should go to your open house. And the focus on this is to, is to be a school of vitality, right? And we focus a lot on the measurements of vitality. What is vitality? It's really a system of doing good things and developing good habits over and over and over again. Academic vitality, leadership vitality, marketing vitality, enrollment vitality, student life vitality, and financial vitality. I just recited the seven circles. So if we're struggling with enrollment, if we're struggling with marketing, you know, begin to think about this concept of vitality and why that is so important for you to create a positive marketing message. All right. So step number two in the raving fan strategy is to identify and invite 25 to 30 raving fans. Really begin to think about those people that love the school. These are faculty and staff. These are parents. These are alumni, parishioners, friends, businesses, grandparents who are the best. Okay, grandparents are the best. And begin to identify them. And these are people that are energetic and positive. They love the school. They have a servant heart and they become your school ambassadors. So begin to think about all those people that show up and join committees and love the school, right? And the key here is to make personal invitations. To make personal invitations to these people and say, we have a very special opportunity for you. And that opportunity is for you to become a raving fan of our school. We're gonna have some fun, 
We're going to join together. We're going to give you some training. We're going to move forward, but we're looking at a process that involves people that love about us, that love us, right, and want to talk about us in the community and then can share that message. All right. Step number three is we're going to train these folks and we're going to provide training and materials for them and invite them to join us through a series of ongoing training sessions. So what is a raving fan? What are we asking them to do as a raving fan? What are the messages that we'd like them to talk about as a raving fan? What are we trying to uh, really accomplish as a raving fan, right? To join us in our marketing efforts. We can have training sessions, there can be video training, and we want to create a business card size school brochure. Now I've done this in many schools and it's very simple to do. It's a double-sided business card that basically can be given out. It can be put in a, a, a pocket or a purse and it can be given out at ball games, the grocery store, in the community to anybody that is interested in learning more about your school. The raving fans are going to carry this with them and have intentional conversations about your school when, when the, the right time comes up or are sitting in, in, in a meeting or at the grocery store or at a ball game and oh, let, let me give you the card. This is this is our little card we give out. Um, it's part of our marketing efforts at the school, and we want to share this with you. So it's a front and back business card. It's got contact information on it, and it lists you know three or four different uh, attributes about your school, just in 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 bullet point form. You know, a school of excellence, a uh, you know, a blue ribbon school, uh, quality academics, uh, extracurriculars, uh, just, you know, put it on a business card so we can carry it in our pocket and we can give it out. It's an extremely valuable and effective strategy. And the key here is that this group, as we provide training and materials for them, they're also sent uh, updates, good news updates every week, every couple of weeks, because once they're trained, they're your ambassadors out in the community and on campus, right? These are ambassadors on campus, and these are ambassadors in your parish and in your community. You know, there are parents that need to to learn more and to know what's going on in the school. There's certainly parishioners that need to know more and know what's going on in the school and then extend it out into the wider community. So ambassadors uh, are out there with the little business card brochure, size brochure. They get some training, they get some videos, and it's part of the Good News Network. Step number four in the raving fan marketing strategy is that we once we have the strategy in place, we create the strategy, that we're gonna monitor the strategy and provide support. So they, they're gonna get training on the key strategies we're asking them to, to provide. So they're ambassadors, they're part of the tour team, they're part of the open house, they're part of uh, the social media share partners, right? So there's about five or six or seven strategies that they're trained on, and most importantly, good word of mouth. You know, I heard years ago that uh, marketing can be simplified into uh, this idea that marketing can be that positive voices in the community are simply louder than negative voices right? So good word of mouth marketing simply drowns out the negativity with good news. We can't eliminate gossip. We can't eliminate complaints, but we can get on top of it if we've got 25 or 30 or 40 people singing our praises. And you know, the first group that should be your raving fans is the faculty and staff. Let me say this again. The first group that should be your raving fans is the faculty and staff. This, this group ought to be out in the community singing your praises. 
not negativity, not gossip, not complaining. In fact, when I do my leadership training with faculty and staff, we talk a lot about no more complaining, less negative thinking, right? Let me say it again, less negative thinking that becomes a positive culture of respect. Are there challenges we're facing? Absolutely. We have challenges, but we also have solutions. So we have strategies here for our raving fans and they get out in the community and share those. There is a timeline of activities so we can share with them uh, every month of the calendar. Remember the four seasons of marketing? So there is uh, the month of August, the month of September, the month of October, all these months, and we're inviting them to join us. Come to the open house, be a raving fan. And it, we're very specific about their roles and responsibilities. Talk to families, give out the card. Here's some things to think about. Here's some things to say. Here are the statements. They're not memorizing, you know, the, the brochure. They're not saying, you know, hi, my name is, right? It's just a casual conversation that takes place. They get some training. There are some strategies and uh, we move forward. And they're sent updates and good news along the way. Hey, did you know that we have uh, the top two spellers from the spelling bee in the diocese? Did you know that we have student of the year in our diocese? Did you know that we have a school play coming up? Very successful. You know? And so they're just getting out. Good news, good news, good news. And the key to this is we've got a very clear game plan. Okay. We've got a game plan for success and we've got, imagine, we, we've got people out in the community very strategically singing our praises, right? Less negative thinking, more positive news. Man, I mean, it just, it's a game changer, okay? Every single time a school has adopted this strategy, and I've done this many, many, many times, probably in the 50, 60, over 100 times I've done this with schools. They always come back within the first couple of months and say, wow, it is producing such positive word of mouth. And that's what you need. Okay. And really build a culture of no complaining and solutions. I have a principal that I work with. He tells his faculty, don't come to me with problems, come to me with solutions, right? So it's not that we won't have challenges, but it's how we're solving them that is most important. And I think beginning on the inside with faculty and staff is an excellent place to start. All right. Our next step and strategy for the raving fan strategy is to evaluate all of your efforts, implement updates, and keep moving. So we talk about having clear metrics and analysis. How many cards were given out? How many people came to the open house? How many clicks are we getting? What's the website traffic? How, how, how are we measuring our strategies? Maybe the billboard, maybe the yard signs, maybe, you know, t-shirts, maybe this, that. Okay. Measure it all. Okay. I don't think it's paralysis by analysis, but we're measuring what we can because measurements give us a sense if this is working or not. Okay. And you will begin to see that people are coming to the open house. People are coming on tours and say, yes, I heard about this from my neighbor. And she's apparently one of your fans. She talked about being a raving fan and say, so you're starting to measure the success. So there's very clear metrics and analysis of this. When there are changes to be made, if something's not working or you maybe want to double down on something that is working, we make changes. Okay. It's easy to make changes. We can, we can decide to make some updates, uh, eliminate something, and then move to something else. And then we persevere and we tell our story. This is about storytelling. This is about people out in the community telling our story and being ambassadors for our school. And the key here is to focus on best practices. We want to be flexible. We're not tied into something for the next five years. We're not tied into a strategy for the next, you know, two or three years, because if it's not working, we need to be flexible enough 
to uh, to, to make these changes. Okay, and so uh, you know th there's a budget in place. And all that is in place, we're looking at best practices. You know, study other schools, study a high school, study a, a, a school in a neighboring diocese. Uh, you know, call me, I can help you to, to look at this or to look at what other schools are doing. There's definitely a component here of best practices. You do not have to reinvent the wheel on school marketing. There are best practices and there are steps to take that you should be focused on. And, uh, and this is the route to take. So if you're just starting or you need a place to start, uh, I can help you. Uh, I have templates for all this. I have a marketing plan and I can help you know, walk you through it. It's the service we provide. It's our ministry. And it's something we're certainly uh, happy to help you with. All right. So we talked a little bit about marketing today. We talked about uh, this raving fan marketing strategy. We talked about the five steps. Uh, of the raving fan marketing strategy, I want you to start to feel comfortable about implementing this process, okay? Because I am all about implementation, okay? And this is such a valuable strategy that it's worth really spending some time on, okay? And um, I want to share with you at this point in our show here, uh, some of the uh, questions I've received, actually one that uh, I get a lot, uh, we get questions throughout the, the session here and people email me questions. But here is one that I get a lot and it may shed some light uh, on your own situation in terms of uh, your planning process. The question is this, what should we budget for in terms of our school marketing efforts? What should be a budget uh, in terms of your school uh, marketing plan. And here's the rule of thumb. In any particular event or activity, the rule of thumb is spending five to 10% of what you want to raise, okay? So if it's an event or if it's enrollment or if it's marketing, you take that number. What do you want to raise, the, whether it's in enrollment, tuition income, whether it's an event or an activity, marketing should be, the budget for marketing should be somewhere between 5% and 10% of what you want to raise. Okay, everybody with me on that? So in the case of a school budget, if you want to raise $100,000 in your auction, your event, or your golf tournament, Generally, you want to spend around $10,000 on marketing and promotion. To raise $100,000, spending $10,000. Now, you can start to cut that cost when you put in place things like the raving fan marketing plan. So you have parents and others and all these different groups talking about the golf tournament. Imagine, you know, 30 people. 50 people, 100 people working on the golf tournament, working on your auction, working on this event, that event, or even enrollment, right? Because enrollment is revenue. Let me say it again. Enrollment is revenue. And so the, the budget is that, um, you know, is somewhere between 5 and 10% of what you want to raise from that activity, okay, that you're going to spend on your marketing budget. So it might be broken down every month that your marketing plan is going to be spending somewhere between $1,000, $5,000, or $10,000 a month. Okay? So again, the rule of thumb is 5 to 10% to be spent on marketing to raise that desired amount. $100,000 desired amount you're going to spend $10,000, perhaps a little more on the front end. There's some cost in this, right? So let's put that in the budget. Let's go to our finance committee, go to our principal, go to our marketing team. If, you, if you're going to work with a marketing company, maybe you have an alumni or a parent that's in the marketing game, uh, they, they will share this with you as well. And you can help, they can help you to, uh, to get a, a handle on the budget. When we do capital campaigns at Catholic Vitality 360, people ask me, you know, if, we're, if we want to raise a million dollars, what's it going to cost? And we look at a campaign budget, we look at an events budget, we look at, 
you know, the printing of materials, we look at events, receptions, all of that, hiring maybe a campaign coordinator to raise a million dollars will cost you about $50,000. Okay, so that's the 5% of a million dollars. If you want to go over, you could perhaps, you know, you're in the 60,000 range, 75 to 10% of what you want to raise is going to go to marketing. Okay, go to marketing and go to cost. So just a general rule of thumb. Okay. And then you want to get a good return on that investment. And I think uh, the best return, of course, is this, which is the raving fan marketing plan. We swear by it. It's very successful and you want to be patient about it over time. All right. So thanks for hanging in there with us. We're uh, on the uh, closing end of our Zoom cast here. And I want to talk about some of the topics coming up in April and May. Now, of course, we have uh, Easter in April and we have the NCEA convention in Pittsburgh this year. I'll be speaking on April 2nd on enrollment vitality and how to create a marketing toolkit. So if you're in Pittsburgh this year, check that out April 2nd at 1.30 uh, in the afternoon. Excuse me, I think it's 3.15. Uh, check the program, but it's Tuesday afternoon. I'll be speaking on enrollment vitality. Our topic for uh, April, Thursday, April 25th, is going to be uh, all the strategies that you should be working on in the springtime of the school year. So what are the springtime advancement and marketing strategies? So this plugs right in to the four seasons of marketing. And spring, of course, is a season. It's the, it's the end of the school year. So we've got spring into the year. We've got summer. We've got fall. You know, we've got winter. Okay, those are the four seasons. And sometimes we lose a little bit of, uh, you know, our creativity at this point. It may have been a long year. You may have been dealing with a lot of, you know, issues this year or maybe staffing issues or budget issues or enrollment issues. So we, we got to <laughs> we, we got to get some we got to get some energy and some vitality uh, moving through the end of the school year. I'm going to share with you uh, some of the topics are some of these strategies that uh, we should be working on at this time of the school year. And then in May, I want to talk about being more united with our parish, okay? Uh, May 16th at 11 a.m. is going to be the topic of uh, towards a more united vision, okay? Uh, strategies that build parish and school collaboration. We need to be more united with our parish. There is a wealth of engagement opportunities with our parishioners and all those people that come to church. And sometimes I see this, this division, the parking lot of, of our campus is the great divide between the school and the parish. Well, we need to bridge the divide and we need to be a ministry of the parish. We need to work with our pastor, our pastoral council, our finance committee, our ministries, our volunteers, bring parishioners over to campus, right? We should have an open house for parishioners, you know, three or four times a year to give them tours of the building. There are parishioners that we know, they know they, there's a school there, but they have not been in your building for years and years and years. So join us for that. Pass the word on that. Pass it to your, uh, your pastor and your pastoral council and all those working in the uh, parish arena. Also your principal and all the school folks. All right. We also get questions uh, coming out of our uh, circle Zoomcast about uh, we, we like this and we like the approach that you take. How do we get the ball rolling with more information and learn more about the ministry of Catholic Vitality 360? Well, I'm, there's a graphic here, <laughs> but it's very, very simple. Uh, I'm Bernard Dumont, the president and CEO of Catholic Vitality 360. I've been working in Catholic schools and parishes for over 30 years now. And it's very easy to get in touch with me. And it's very easy to partner with us. Uh, we have assessment tools. We have a number of processes and partnerships and strategies that can be implemented right away to get you moving in the right direction. So 
very simple. Uh, just call me, uh, 337-412-9110. It's on the slides. And uh, we can talk about your needs. We can talk about coming on site. We can talk about uh, organizing a Zoom cast and a consultation and just beginning a conversation about a partnership and engaging with your school and your diocese. Uh, we do a lot of workshops. I'm doing, you know, seven, eight workshops a month, and those are in various dioceses. Uh, and we work with schools in a diocese. We do a lot of workshops. We can do a marketing workshop, this kind of workshop, an enrollment workshop, a visioning workshop. Maybe you need a strategic vision. Maybe you need a feasibility study or a capital campaign. And we certainly like to do those things. Uh, again, this is our ministry and we'd be honored to help you. All right. So we're coming to the final uh, stage of our Zoomcast here. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to be with you today. And uh, I want to say thank you for everybody that has joined us. You can find much more of our content on our website and also check out our YouTube channel. Uh, all these videos are on the YouTube channel. We, we record them, we edit them, and we put them up on the YouTube channel. Uh, you, can, you can show these at a meeting. You can show these in a small group. Uh, they're just about one hour in duration. And uh, we love to share our strategies as we focus on the vitality and growth of your school. And we care deeply about your success and truly do want to help. Uh, don't worry about all the, the obstacles or the doubts of, well, how, how's this going to work or what should we be doing? We're, we're simply, we're, we're in the service of helping Catholic schools and parishes. So we want to invite you to embrace this and to go forth in faith. We are a Catholic community. We want to be a community of vitality and growth. And please give some thoughts to this as we pray about it and go forth. So we'd like you to think about bringing Jesus Christ into the center of your life. This is the ministry of Catholic schools and parishes. And for us to be effective, we need to bring Jesus Christ to the center of our life, to be the focus of our life, not, not on the periphery or in the boundaries, but in the center of our life, to build good daily habits as a growth process, and to think about your habits every day. What's going to produce some very good fruit and some good results and this sense of growing in our faith and growing in our professional life as we serve others. To surround yourself with good people. It's so important to surround yourself with good people. I heard something years ago that we are the five people we associate with. We are the five people we associate with. We're their values, we're their habits, we're their thoughts, we're their desires, you know, and, and we align ourselves with them. And so be very careful about surrounding yourself with good people. Uh, do what you say and build trust. Very important to build trust in this process, in, in you as a person, and also in your school and in your parish. We would like you to think about implementing a bold vision and culture of vitality in your school. If you don't have a strategic vision, you know, now's the time to think about that and to uh, begin to put that in place. We have templates. We have uh, discussion groups on this. We have webinars on this. We do a lot of strategic visioning for schools. Again, trying to remove the complexity. Don't get bogged down in that this school vision has to be a multi, multi, multi-year process. It basically can be done over four or five months. We have a template. You think about it. You bring groups together. You have a vitality summit around it. You create some goals and strategies. And you do the most important thing, which is once the vision is completed, then you implement. If I can say that there is one downfall of most strategic plans, it is they never see the light of day and they're never implemented. So we create a one page strategic vision for a school, a one pager, and that has the mission, the vision, the goals and strategies. And we begin the process of implementation. And then finally focus on the three P's of prayer, 
patience and persistence, having the grit to move through this every day, every week, and every month. Wow. So thank you for hanging in there with us. You can see this uh, on our website and on the YouTube channel. And also uh, come back to us and look at all the new offerings that are there, uh, the partnership opportunities, the workshops. If you'd like a workshop, certainly call me about that. I do travel quite a bit and I'm in schools and parishes every day and uh, really would love to visit with you and talk about your school and where you're going. All right. And don't forget that uh, begin to think about the raving fan marketing plan as a high impact marketing strategy. All right. So thank you all for joining us today from the studios of Catholic Vitality 360. I'm Bernard Dumont uh, and have a good Holy Week and Easter as we close today with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we come to you in gratitude for all of our gifts, our blessings, and all those in our lives that support us in our Catholic faith. We ask you to bless our administration, our faculty and staff, and all those that love our school and have the desire and heart to serve our school as being part of this marketing process. We ask you to give us the faith the zeal, and the perseverance to move through the school year and the remaining months of the school year with vigor and vitality. And for our good Holy Week and Easter season, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned for more to come in the coming uh, weeks and months. Invite your friends and family and colleagues to join us. It's a free service. We love to do it, and we'd love to hear more about how you're doing. Just get in touch with us, and we'd be happy to, to stay in touch and reach out and be a part of your school uh, community. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Bernard Dumont of Catholic Vitality 360, and make it a great day. Thank you so much. God bless.